This week on Maker Update, my picks for the top five most year-defining projects of 2019. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to a very special edition of Maker Update. Uh, this is an episode where I'm going to take a look back at some of my favorite projects from this past year and pick a handful of them that I think deserve a little victory lap. This was a really hard episode to do because there's so many great projects from this past year, so I tried to narrow it down just to the kinds of projects I had never seen anything like before. So in no particular order, because these are all different kinds of projects, let's take a look at some of my favorite projects from this past year. Starting at the beginning of the year in episode number 109, Project Alias by Bjorn Carmen. This is a Raspberry Pi based project that you fit on top of your Google Home or Amazon Echo. It does two things. First, it pumps white noise into your device when it's not in use to prevent the possibility of it listening in on you. Second, it acts as a middleman between you and your device, allowing you to change the wake word of your virtual assistant to anything you want. Marvin, are you there? I'm here. What can I do for you? It works. So if you want to change Alexa's name to Carl, you can program Alias to respond to Carl and then it will whisper Alexa into your Echo to get it to wake up. The whole thing sort of rides the line between silly and artsy and paranoid, but it's one of the first projects I've seen that plays with the idea of both personalizing the virtual assistant tech that keeps creeping into our lives and also controlling privacy on your terms. Another project I love this year that totally caught me by surprise was this dueling Harry Potter wand quiz system by Wormy at Pseudomod shown in episode number 137. From the motion activated wand controllers to the LED animations, the sound effects, and the custom remote for the quiz show host, the whole system is a beautifully polished mix of engineering and fandom. On a component level, it's also 90% Adafruit products, so if you're particularly comfortable working in the Adafruit universe, it's a slam dunk. I think the other reason I love this project so much is that it really reminds us that what we're capable of can really feel like magic to people. It hits that imaginary sweet spot where all the tech is concealed away and as an audience member, you just get to experience this new and magical thing. From episode number 125, Ben Krasno's electroluminescent Apollo era display made from scratch. Ben went to extreme lengths to recreate this rare vintage tech, starting with conductive indium tin oxide coated glass Coated with a dielectric and a series of silkscreen conductive ink patterns, he then uses a custom circuit board to drive the logic and provide the 300 volts needed to light it up. It's not a project I have any business recreating myself, but Ben graciously documents everything I'd need to give it a try, including the PCB files, code, and graphics. I just love that it's a project and a display technology I've never seen before, and that Ben leverages his engineering skill and curiosity to follow his obsession through to a beautiful result. From episode number 121, an Arduino-powered ornithopter by Gabba People. We're all familiar with your standard quadcopter-style drone. They're great, but when I see most DIY drone projects, I typically file them under more of the same. Apparently, there's a small but enthusiastic community of hobbyists who make ornithopter-style drones, but there's a real lack of detailed instruction on how to create one. In his guide on instructables, Gabba People writes this wrong with an extremely detailed guide and three-part video series that not only explains how to create an RC ornithopter, but also explores some key elements of flight and why certain design choices matter. It's an outstanding document that could easily be a book of its own, and it's just shared with you for free. I love that, and just like all these other projects, I love being surprised with things that people have made that I would have never imagined things that are either years ahead of the consumer market or too impractical or expensive to make a business out of. As makers, we uniquely can have these things and the generosity we show by sharing their designs with each other is one of the best parts of this community. Finally, representing a trend that really gained a lot of momentum this year, Jiri Prow and his freeform electromechanical tulip. Freeform electronics were everywhere this year from the small exquisite works of Mohi Poite Emily Velasco's freeform Atari punk console to Hackaday's circuit sculpture contest. But from my perspective, no single maker did a more thorough job of documenting the art of circuit sculpture better than Jiri. The ever blooming mechanical tulip design in particular 
really advances the possibility of designing systems in brass rod that move and articulate without shorting the electronics. It's an outstanding resource and a great window into the tools and techniques behind freeform circuit design. So there you go, those are five of my favorite maker projects from the past year that have surprised and inspired me and I hope they do the same for you. Now remember, you can catch your weekly dose of inspiration by catching this show every week over on the DigiKey YouTube channel, so you should subscribe to that. You can also get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week with a few bonus projects and the video link and everything you need. A big thanks and a happy holidays to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for supporting the show all year and all into next year. I'm looking forward to making new episodes for you guys, so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.